Throughout the series Dune by Frank Herbert, the theme of prediction is essential. The very fabric of the civilization that he presents to us readers is one that's built on prescience, where strange, monstrous creatures referred to as guild navigators guide the ships of humanity through the void of space, using their ability to predict the future to shape it into something else. The central characters of Paul and Leto are both extremely gifted oracles, cursed both with the knowledge of the future and a burden to help humanity escape the tyranny of prediction. I sincerely doubt that Frank Herbert knew how powerful of an allegory he had created. We are the ourselves the inhabitants of the universe where prescience defines our lives. By the end of this video, I hope to have convinced you that our ability to predict the future is both one of our most powerful and misunderstood abilities. Much of what we have and may have is predicated on it. And most of our predictions say more about us than reality. I'm a big believer in punchlines, so I'm gonna drop it right here. I'm a big believer in punchlines, so I'm gonna drop it right here. Understanding and prediction have a strange symmetry. When you identify this, you can see more clearly the whole purpose of understanding. It's flower. Prediction. You now know the whole point of this video. If that's all you want, feel free to click away. But I believe that anything that loses value through summarization was never really worth your time anyway. If you're a young man between the age of 16 and 35, I believe there's an extremely strong chance you've been exposed to some version of the alternate history space. It encompasses a huge collection of YouTubers, from the Alternate History Hub to What If Altist, all of whom craft complex narrative stories around a relatively basic premise. You choose an event in history, you alter the event, describe a new history with what changed. Not that uncommonly something as simple as a single person dying or a war being won will butterfly chaotically into a new world. Where France is now the master of the 19th century, and England is nothing but a second-rate power. Usually these videos have a certain narrative gravity to them. They are essentially benign entertainment, one of the countless activities we Zoomers use to fill the screaming void of silence that is our lives. I'll begin this video by asking you to go through the task of thinking of your own alternate history scenario. Suppose in a dark and stormy night, somewhere in the mid-Atlantic, by chance a lightning bolt had struck the Santa Maria in 1492 sinking with it Columbus and in turn forcing La Nina and La Pinta to turn back. How would history have changed? I will pause here for 15 seconds to allow yourself to consider it. To those brave few of you with the fortitude to face your thoughts for 15 seconds, take a moment to collect the scraps into something concrete. I'll hazard myself some predictions of your scenarios. Some of you no doubt thought that nothing would change, perhaps because you were dogmatically deterministic, or perhaps because you believed that European military and immuno superiority, a la Jared Diamond, made the individual essentially irrelevant. No number of freak accidents could stop some European from eventually landing in the Americas, at which point state and population pressure made their conquest a fait accompli. Others perhaps allowed their imagination to flower more chaotically, imagining a future where instead of European colonial states, an indigenous society remained, perhaps as advanced as ours, perhaps not. I'll predict, though, that for all of you, the human element was absent. Your predictions were at their core a prediction of systems, of impersonal forces like capitalism and state power, not human ones like love and despair. History was at almost a huge machine composed of interlocking gears. To some, these gears are racism, to others, population pressure. And this isn't a failure of imagination. It's a product of a good prediction. Because to predict what would have happened without Columbus, a person, we must see how the machine changes when that part is removed, and more importantly, what remains untouched. For example, I would believe it would be tenuous to argue that Columbus's death would have unleashed demons from the literal bowels of hell, or that volcanoes would have erupted simultaneously across the earth, dooming humanity to extinction. Thus already our prediction has guardrails, created from our understanding of causality. Just as we cannot imagine a world in which the death of Columbus fundamentally reshaped the relationship between a mother and her young child, 
not for some humans, but for all of them. It's equally absurd to predict that his death would have unleashed the holy fury of Mother Gaia. It's possible, of course, that a volcano could have erupted at the exact moment the ship sank, but it would have been a different event, exogenous to the change I presented, since to predict, we must have some model of the thing we are predicting, how its components interact and what can be safely ignored. How do we know what to ignore? I would be skeptical if anyone claimed that they, in those 15 seconds, had interrogated each component of their internal model. Instead, we look around us and see what in our world seems unshakable, what things we can more easily a picture apocalypse than history without. To some, these might be greed, to others, reproductive pressure, but we take this intuition and we interact it. As it spirals out into infinity, finally we arrive at something that resembles the only data point we have, today, the end of history. This is what I refer to as narrative gravity. The idea that any set of theories used in a prediction must lead to a world that at least in some deep emotional way resembles our own, or it's a priori implausible, because our prediction is at its core a validation of what we have already believed, about right now. It's a claim to understanding of the universe and how the gears of human society grind. I hope you can see how no coherent alternative history prediction can exist without a related claim to understanding. But of course, this dynamic flows both ways. Understanding cannot exist without an associated claim to prediction. Consider an economist who's interested in studying the relationship between minimum wage and employment. Suppose they conduct a scientific examination of counties on either side of a state border that appear to only differ in terms of their exposure to a state minimum wage law. In order to supplement this empirical result, they also develop a model. What is this for if not prediction? Is it just to show that there's a difference in both the unemployment rate and the minimum wage between two arbitrary political units? Or is it more believably a claim to causality and thus prediction? That their model and results speak to the more general case. Thus, if a politician changes the minimum wage, it will impact employment, not arbitrarily, but in the way the economist has predicted. Prediction is at its core the flower. It's why you grow the plant to begin with. Beyond the social sciences, this relationship is even stronger. In fact, this symmetry is so strong, I would argue, identifying it walks the fine line of necessity and usefulness. Consider the laws of Newtonian physics in their closed form simplicity. In these laws, gravitational force between two objects is equal to some constant multiplied by the product of two masses and divided by the square of the distance between them. If you will consent that this is a claim to understanding the universe, something I believe Newton would have done, then its relationship to prediction should fall directly out of the screen and onto your head, like a metaphorical apple. Given any set of values for these variables, it would be trivial to predict the gravitational force between two objects. All possible predictions from this formula already exist within its neatness. Through knowing Newtonian physics, you can make an infinity of possible predictions about a world that behaves those laws. Once you see this symmetry, it's impossible to miss in everything, even our daily lives. We constantly exploit the symmetry between understanding and prediction to navigate our lives. I know that turning the faucet on will create not water, not because it has every time, but because I have some model of how it works. And so if water does not emerge, I'm not left destitute without explanation, but I can venture forth in search of a solution. Of course, that model need not be correct to allow me to make predictions, even accurate ones. In fact, a correct model, one that truly represents all physical and human interactions, would be remarkably dog shit in its cumbersomeness. The model need only be correct in a narrow sense, that it generates predictions that match reality. Newtonian physics is not a complete understanding of reality, meaning its predictions are all wrong in important ways, large and small, but using it alone, I could navigate to the moon and back. As an absurd example of something being incorrect by design, consider an airplane walkway. If you were examining the speed you were going, it would not be V0, your walk speed, plus V1, the speed of the walkway. Instead, there would be a relativistic correction term. However, it would be so tiny on the scale that we operate that it's better to simply ignore the truth in favor of simplicity. Every day we are saddled with countless incorrect theories. They both cloud our mind and allow us to function at all. What matters is less the existence of mistakes, but the problems that they create. In fact, for many of us, holding contradictory understandings without any tension is just part of our daily lives. Because even without vocalizing, we know that both stances are wrong in the general case. 
but useful within their own domain. In fact, one day, when you are presented with this apparent contradiction, do not take it as a reason to abandon the understanding that you have, but instead as the opportunity that it is, a chance to create a new and better understanding and thus prediction. Having an incorrect or complete theory is beyond okay. It's what I believe makes us as humans such powerful creatures. We are capable of living within paradox, making predictions and behaving as if we have full certainty, all the while knowing that in some deep way they're untrue. I would go so far as to argue that relaxing this tension and beginning to believe that any explanation that you have is a true reflection of reality is the truly dangerous path. That brings me back to the beginning and why I wanted to talk about this subject, and also why I chose the channel name Guild Navigator to begin with. We do not have prescience, we do not have a god emperor who sees the future and will guide us down a golden path, but I believe that we each carry a small element of this within ourselves. But that naturally gives us a deeper responsibility than I think is widely publicly acknowledged. Because this strange symmetry that exists between knowing and prediction, we should be careful to do either without acknowledging how it will shape our minds by implicitly doing the other. We must see it for what it is, an Ouroboros, not a mouth or a tail, it's both an infinite reflection. When you accept a claim to understanding that is removed from prediction, understand it for what it is, an incomplete picture of itself. I will go further into this in future videos, but if you walk away with one thought, aside from the title of this video, walk away with this. An axiomatic system can be used to do anything. Its logical consistency is a product of its very construction. What matters are the a priori assumptions about reality. Thus, just because something is internally consistent does not make it true. Only if its predictions are validated by reality can we, we with humility say that it isn't wrong. Always judge any claim to understanding, not by its internal structure or even by its, the intuitive truth of its axioms, but instead by its predictions. And symmetrically judge a prediction, not by how right it feels, but how reasonable the axioms it's predicated on are. Do not miss the Ouroboros for its teeth.